going to go over the best hair saving strategy for men. First of all, if you truly don't care at all about losing your hair in your life, accept your fate, go be happy, be prosperous. But if you wanna save it as long as you can and prevent the hair loss for as long as you can and it's happening a lot faster than you would expect it to or a lot younger than you would expect it to, then listen on because I'm gonna go over the best medications and direct strategies. So what we're talking about here is of course, genetic male pattern hair loss, which occurs mainly on the top of the head. For whatever reason, those hair follicles are susceptible to DHT, which harms the ability for the hair follicles to grow. The hair follicles shrink, the individual hair strands get thinner, and eventually they'll stop growing. So it was originally thought that male pattern hair loss was inherited only from the mother's side of the family. That ended up not being true. They did more study on that, determined that it can be inherited from both mother and father's side of the family. The reality, of course, is that there is no way to change the genetic characteristics of your hair follicles to make them stop being susceptible to DHT's effects on it, which causes the hair loss. In the future, we might have gene editing. So the most direct way to stop or slow hair loss is to take a DHT inhibitor, which is going to lower the amount of DHT production in your body, therefore decreasing its uh, amount of harmful effects on the hair follicles. And the most proven, most direct strategy is to take that DHT inhibitor, finasteride or dutasteride, and use minoxidil, which is a hair growth stimulant. If your hair loss is extremely aggressive or it happens at very, very young ages, these two things may not be nearly enough to prevent hair loss. But for most people who lose hair slowly over the years, a DHT inhibitor plus minoxidil use is enough to significantly slow down or stop the progression of hair loss. The body takes testosterone and it converts it into dihydrotestosterone, DHT. There's also an enzyme produced in the body called a 5-alpha reductase enzyme. That is the mechanism by which testosterone is converted into DHT. So what you're really taking is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. That's what finasteride and dutasteride are. They block a major portion of that enzyme and therefore that decreases the amount of DHT production in the body. Finasteride blocks about 66 to 70 percent of that 5-alpha reductase enzyme so it basically lowers your DHT by about 70 percent in the body. Dutasteride does so to the effect of about 90 percent so it's lowering your DHT production by about 90 percent. Finasteride was originally developed as a drug to treat enlarged prostates at a dose of about 5 milligrams per day. So during the study of that and the treatment of, of men who had enlarged prostates, they discovered that finasteride also regrew some hair and it stopped hair loss in men who were experiencing hair loss. So the dose that finasteride got approved at to treat male pattern hair loss is one milligram per day. According to a lot of studies, the actual peak effectiveness of finasteride as a anti-hair loss drug is about 0.8 milligrams per day. It's just commonly prescribed at a dose of one milligram per day in a little tablet. So the catch is, of course, you have to start it early in your hair loss experience, okay? If you wait until you've lost uh, all of the hair on top of your head, finasteride is not going to be able to regrow all those hair follicles. So you have to start finasteride relatively early on in your hair loss experience. So the side effects, how common are they? How much of a problem are they? Reported side effects from finasteride use total to about 5 to 10% of men who take it. That's the number of men who report significant, noticeable side effects from finasteride. But you got to remember that even when they are noticeable or significant, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are a complete detriment or burden on life either. Finasteride comes in a tiny little tablet. You can get it relatively inexpensive through your dermatologist, through your regular doctor. You can go on Amazon Pharmacy and get a prescription and then order it through Amazon Pharmacy. I got a box full of finasteride when I did my hair transplant, but like I said, you can go to Amazon Pharmacy, to any pharmacy, any basic doctor, and get a prescription for finasteride tablets. So dutasteride is the other 5-alpha reductase DHT inhibitor. It's stronger than finasteride in that it lowers about 90% of your DHT production in your body. And it also was discovered originally because of its use in men who had enlarged prostates. It hasn't been formally approved for the treatment of hair loss in the United States, but you can get it off-label and a lot of doctors will prescribe dutasteride as well for off-label use of hair loss treatment. It should go even farther in preventing or stopping hair loss, but most people who are experiencing hair loss, you should just start with finasteride first because in most cases, finasteride will go a significant way in saving your hair. Dutasteride is out there if you wanna go even farther. So the other direct medicated strategy to prevent hair loss is called minoxidil. 
which you can buy over the counter as a topical solution, either comes in a liquid solution or a foam solution. Minoxidil, unfortunately, doesn't have any effect on the DHT, which is causing the hair loss, but what it does is it acts as a growth stimulant because it increases blood flow to the area and basically can increase the diameter of the shaft of the individual hair follicles. So it comes in a little bottle like this. You can buy it at any drugstore or grocery store. Usually it comes with like a little dropper that you can use to, to apply to the head. The longer your hair is, the more difficult and annoying it is to apply. But if you're still in the early stages of that hair loss, this is not hard to apply once at night before you go to sleep. Just apply it to the area, make sure it absorbs in. Um, you want to let it soak in for at least four hours so you don't want to be showering until at least four hours or so after you apply the minoxidil. Just got to make sure when you apply this that it gets to the skin on your head so it's going into the hair follicles themselves not just on the hair. This has to hit the skin be absorbed into the scalp so that it has effects on the hair follicles. If you have pets specifically cats be very careful with minoxidil. It can be life-threatening if it's ingested by cats or other pets. So if you're using the topical minoxidil at night, make sure that you keep your cats far away from that so they don't lick it or ingest it in any way. If it gets on your pillow, same thing. Just take that very seriously. You want to keep the minoxidil away from your pets. It must be used every day to keep and maintain the gains and the effects. If you stop using it, then those gains are gonna be lost. So it's something that you just have to decide if you wanna do. Same thing with finasteride, of course. If you use finasteride for a few years and then stop using finasteride over time, slowly you're, you're gonna lose the gains and the positive benefits that you had from, um, from using it. So you have to keep using these two strategies um, forever or for as long as you want to hold on to as much hair as you can. It's all a personal choice in the end. Minoxidil also comes in a oral tablet form kind of like finasteride is for people who want to take it orally and have it go systemic now that was originally created as a um, anti high blood pressure medication so a another side effect of that oral minoxidil is that it increases hair growth on the top of your head and elsewhere on your body as well. But because minoxidil in its oral form goes systemic and it has documented cardiovascular effects in men who take it who have healthy blood pressure levels and don't need that anti-high blood pressure medication, it could be a potential problem. Oral minoxidil is not officially formally approved for the treatment of hair loss in the United States, but again, it can be used off-label. So usually guys who try to take oral minoxidil for hair growth purposes are taking it at between one and 2.5 milligrams per day. Some of the documented side effects from oral minoxidil use can include drops in blood pressure, chest pains and fluid buildup around the heart, which can be very dangerous and it can be a medical emergency. So these side effects seem to be rare, but they have occurred. So my personal approach to oral minoxidil is very similar to one of the YouTubers who I've listened to for a long time, Hair Cafe channel, his name's Kevin. He has done a great job at showing a lot of that documented evidence about the potential severe side effects of oral minoxidil. I tried oral minoxidil on two separate occasions okay, several months apart, and both times that I tried taking it at a dosage of 1.25 milligrams a day, I experienced chest pains within days of starting it. And then after a few, within a day or two after stopping it, after taking it for, you know, almost a week, both times, a few days after stopping the oral minoxidil, my chest pains went away. That happened on two separate occasions, several months apart. So unfortunately, I might be somebody who experiences those chest pains from oral minoxidil. I recommend starting with topical minoxidil, which in, in most people, that'll be very good for you. If you do decide to take oral minoxidil, just understand that you're taking on those, those potential risks. All right, so those two things, the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, finasteride or dutasteride, plus minoxidil, those two things are the most direct, proven treatments to save your hair for as long as you can. So I'm gonna quickly go over a few other strategies that you can use and products that might increase the strength of your hair a little bit in addition to those direct medication strategies. I also use rosemary oil. It's possible it could have a similar effect to minoxidil on the hair growth itself, so it might strengthen the hair growth a little bit, not to the same degree that minoxidil does, okay? So rosemary oil is definitely not essential. It's not super important. I use just a rosemary oil like this. 
Uh, it has biotin in it as well. I usually apply this every other day to my scalp. A few other hair loss prevention techniques that may be to some degree effective in an overall strategy. It's ketoconazole shampoo. It's basically an anti-inflammatory shampoo, especially with people who have a lot of dandruff. This type of shampoo can help calm down that inflammation. Though it can be very drying on the scalp and the hair itself, so I recommend the Intelligent Shops ketoconazole shampoo which is also super volumizing. Another technique is called microneedling or derma rolling. This is used commonly too on just regular skin as a skin like rejuvenation technique. So it can help in a minor way, maybe increase more blood flow and health to hair follicles if they are beginning to weaken. These devices uh, you can buy, sometimes they come in little rollers that you roll back and forth over the skin. I use this one called a derma pen, a stamp pen. So it has like, little tiny needles there and you can adjust the length of those needles depending on how far you want them to go in and then what you do is you just press this all over the area you do not want to do this so much that you bleed okay you don't want blood to be pouring out of your skin you should just see redness and maybe a little bit of blood coming up in underneath the scalp that means that you're doing the derma stamping or microneedling correctly. Microneedling can also help a little bit with absorption of minoxidil. You can do the derma rolling or the microneedling before you apply the minoxidil and it'll help with the absorption. If you're gonna microneedle, only once or twice a week it's not something that you want to be doing all the time because it causes trauma to the skin and you don't want to overdo it you also got to be careful with microneedling if you're going to have a hair transplant in the future because you don't want to be doing so much microneedling that you're causing a loss of elasticity of the scalp which can make it harder for a hair transplant to be successful hair transplants are successful when the skin is as youthful and as untouched as possible so definitely take it easy on the microneedling there is nothing else out there on the market especially on the gray market that is going to regrow uh, a bunch of hair that has been lost there are a few new medications substances that are being investigated undergoing investigation and clinical trials right now that could go a long way in stopping dht's effects on hair follicles for good so it's possible that within a few years, there is a new uh, medication treatment topical solution out there, which does completely stop DHT's effects on the hair follicles. That's enough for this video. See you again in the next one. Goodbye.